hello welcome again to my youtube channel i really appreciate you stopping by if you are new please subscribe for my returning uh, subscribers i really really thank you very much um there is something which i've been seeing quite a lot of online and um i really thought um i'll share my opinions um, please understand these are just my opinions because uh, I've not I've not worked there um, but um, I've read a lot of cases of um, Kenyans or let's call it Africans and uh, Filipino Bangladeshi and the rest uh, housemaids suffering in Saudi Arabia so, from my time living abroad, I thought um, I'll share my opinion because um, I'm not a house girl. I don't live in the Gulf, but uh, I think more or less I can maybe understand some issues. So, when you go to a foreign country... You are new there. You don't understand the language. You don't understand the custom. Everything is new. And the biggest, the worst is the loneliness. And missing your family and friends. Um, nobody can explain this to you. This you have to experience by yourself to understand how it is. So. A lady who has maybe never left her village reaches Saudi Arabia. They find foreign food, foreign people, foreign language, foreign house, and foreign rules. It's already... I don't know. It doesn't matter how well they welcome you. You are already feeling homesick mm, because uh, when I came here I had family here but I was homesick I really wanted to go back and uh, now and at least I knew that um, I'll be going back I, don't, I think it was two months so I knew I will be going back in two months but I was so lonely and miserable. I really just wanted to pack up and go. So this lady reached Saudi Arabia or whichever country it is. Everything is new. Your boss doesn't speak English. You don't speak Arabic. So I feel the boss don't have all the patience to teach you the language. They employ you to work, not to learn. So you reach there, they realize they cannot even ask you to get them a glass of milk. So you find that everyone is already on edge. They are thinking, this is not, this is not what I bargained for. And you're thinking from the many bad things you read, you're thinking, I hope they will treat me right. Not only that, you are really, really scared. You are in a foreign house. And as I said, foreign country and all that. So you just find that um, you are not in a good position at all. And then... Um, as a housemaid, you are expected to clean, maybe to cook. Then uh, the boss realizes you don't know how to cook. Not because you don't know how to cook, but you know how to cook your food, not their food. The boss ex expects you to clean with the... Um, I'll call them chemicals with cleaning chemicals and yet you don't know which is which or uh, 
you just pour it like uh, you are pouring water because nobody has told you how much you need then it's just um, you're just not in good terms really another thing I do here ladies complain about is uh, saying that doors are being locked Okay, um, Arab countries are hot, so they use air condition, and there's just no way you'll have the air condition on and open the door for hot air to come in from outside. So that's just how it is, the door stays closed. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't change it. It's nothing against you. That's just how they are. It seems like um, if you came here in the winter, we use heaters and uh, then we have the doors locked and that's how it is. Not only that, um, um, I find that... Um, in most of these civilized countries, people just lock their doors and that's that's how it is. I mean, nobody has ever told me to lock my door, but uh, when I come in, the first thing I do is to turn back and lock the door behind me and that's how it is. So you just have to, I think... Uh, you just have to learn to live with that. Another thing I hear so much about is not being allowed to go outside. <clears throat> also, ladies, in a Muslim culture, a woman stays home. A woman is not allowed to go out. So, this should really not be an issue at all. You are in their place. You have to accept and respect their culture. So you are not allowed to go out. Take it for two years. You'll be going out long enough when you are back home. Um, Because... Um, they are not going to change their rules for you. And um, even if they gave you a chance to go out, where do you really want to go? Maybe you live in a place where there are no buses. Uh, or uh, maybe, maybe not even taxis. So uh, they lock the door. I can't go anywhere. Where are you really going? Because to me, in my opinion, I go out to shop. I go out maybe in a restaurant. I go out to work, but otherwise I'm home and I'm okay. But then when it comes time for me to go out, that means I'm not working. I have holiday from work. Then I really go out. Then I really, really go out. And uh, I think... Um, Many ladies should learn this. Okay, I'm in a Muslim house. I'm a woman. I can't go out. And uh, that's that. Um, I think sometimes um, many came from Kenya or uh, whichever country, but um, they did not think of such things or... Uh, Things like not being able to go out, it just affect you because of the, of the other issues you're having. You are missing your family. You are missing the food. You are, you are miserable. So you just find that um, something very small, which should not be an issue, turn out to be an issue. But um, if you are told you can't go out, you went there to work. You didn't go there to go out. Okay. 
what I mean is working was your priority. Working was what took you there, not going out. So work fast. If you can't go out, then not go out. Go out when you finish your contract and go back home. That's how I look at it. Mm. Some ladies have complained. Um, for example, Betty from South... Where was it? Betty from Iraq said they were being mistreated because they were told to wash a wall. Hmm. Guys... I live in my own place. I'm the boss here. I can do and live what I like. But I wash the walls. Nobody tell me, but I wash the walls. I've used toothbrush to scrub places that are hard to reach. And that's it. So, sometimes I feel that... Um, some ladies misunderstood the concept of work or they misunderstood what they are supposed to do. Or uh, something like, I came here to be a house girl, but they asked me to wash a car. Uh, that should not be a problem. Um, washing a car is just, is just a part of work. Uh, did you hear the word domestic? Domestic is things at home. You can... Uh, mm, how can I say it? You can do everything really. And uh, somebody who is telling you... You came here as a cook. You are not supposed to clean. They are wrong. If the boss asks you to clean, then be it, you clean. If the boss asks you to wash the car, that should not be a problem. Because, uh, look at it this way, it's not as if, if, if you refuse the, to wash the car, they'll not say, okay, this car was supposed to be washed in one hour and she refused, so let me, and let her sit down for this one hour. No, they will find you something else to do. So just make it a part of your work. It's it's like a, it's like you are a house girl. This is a poor example, but um, I'll still use it. You are a house girl, and uh, your boss tells you to go to the shop to buy something. Will you not go to the shop because you are a house girl? You are a cleaner, you are a cook, so you are not going to the supermarket? No, you will go to the supermarket. Or um, uh, you have seen this in Kenya and in other places. You might be a house girl. Then the boss may, may tell you, okay, from this time to, to this time you are a house girl, maybe in the mornings, then in the afternoons you come to help me in the shop. It's okay, it's okay. It's just a part of your work, provided they pay your salary. And uh, somebody trying to tell you that um, they brought me here to be a house girl, so I'm not going to cook. Um they are being dishonest or uh, they don't know what they are saying. Your boss may decide not to, may decide just to have, to let it pass so as to have peace, but in their hearts, they know you are wrong. I will give you an example with the, my working place. I'm not a cleaner in any way, but I've cleaned the yard, and that's that. Um, I've helped um, put up decorations 
in my working place. I've helped um, put up a curtain which fell down. And that's really not my work. But uh, I'm there. It's my working time. So if my boss asked me to, could you please help me do this? I'm okay with that, really. I'm really, really okay with that. Provided it's something I can do physically, I know I can do it. Physically, I mean mentally or physically, whichever way you want to look at it, but I know I can do it, then I'll do it. It's still during my working time, so why not? I, I don't see something wrong with it and... It's not an everyday thing because my work is so well programmed that um, I really don't have 20 minutes to waste. So if, if they ask me, could you please help me do this? I know it's something I'm doing once and maybe it will just take me 10 minutes. So there's nothing wrong with that. So if you are a house girl in Saudi Arabia and you are boss asks you uh, can you please uh, go with the driver to take my daughter to school don't say no um you are supposed to be part of that house for now temporarily and being a part of a house is also trying to to support and encourage Encourage, I mean, encourage good character, encourage um, positivity. Um, what do you think your boss thinks when they ask you to cook and you say, no, that's not in my contract? Mm, I, think, I think then you even have a very good boss because if my boss, and really I'm serious now, if my boss asked me to get a coffee and I said, no, that's in my contract, I'll not be going back there tomorrow. For this, I can assure you. Because my, I'll be fired. And that's that. So, you have to learn to be, um, let's see, you have to learn to be professional. Your boss asking you to take care of the daughter for one day does not mean they have to pay you extra. It's just a part of your work. I mean, it's not a permanent thing that you are a babysitter. And even if you are, even if they make you permanently babysitter, it means they will reduce the hours you have to work. Maybe not the hours, but the workload. It's uh, the time you are taking, you are being a babysitter and cleaning will have to combine together. So it will be half this, half you are washing swimming pool, half you are washing the car, half you are cleaning the house, half you are cooking, half you are taking care of the baby. So if you combine all this, it will make a whole so it doesn't mean that um, you being a babysitter today, you'll only work uh, for 16 hours if you were supposed to work 10 hours. No, it just means you are doing this work, but you can also do this work. At least um, um, I've worked in so many different places and in each and Every of my work contract, there is always a word. If there is help needed in a certain place, you will have to help. It doesn't mean you are there every day, but if they need help, you will have to help. And uh, really, it's not even only when it's in my contract. I don't see how I will see some body needs help and I, I just stay away because it's not my work no that's not how how you survive with other people 
Now, another thing I, I've seen quite a lot of is um, people saying, oh, the work was too much. I told them to bring me back to the office and they refused, so I refused to work. Excuse me? <laughs> you refuse to work expecting what? You live in that house. You sleep in that house. You drink water in that house and whatever. You refuse to work and you expect to still sleep there. Then you have to think again. Because I think... Um, I don't think if I had a house girl and they told me, I wanted this from you and you didn't do it so I refused to work... No, they will not sleep under my roof. They will have to go. Because remember, it's the work contract that keeps the two of you together. It's the work contract that make both of you tolerate each other. So, this time you are refusing to work. I think... Um, the minute you decide you have refused to work is the minute you should take your things and go. And um, that's how it is. That's how it should be. Um, even in many, I think, um, even in the Western countries, if if you told your boss, yeah, you didn't do this for me, so I refuse to work. No, you are not going back there the next day, really. You'll be fired. So uh, next time you think uh, the boss didn't do this, so you refuse to work. I think um, I think you should pack up and leave without thinking you refuse to work and uh, they just let you. Because you you are really looking for some serious trouble. They may let you think you won, but they will be looking at you very well. So that's that. Please stop being childish. Um, another thing uh, I've heard quite a lot is a lady saying, I told them to bring me to the office and they refuse. <clears throat> Now, we all have our plans and what we want to do and all that. Why would you think your need is so important that this boss should take his two hours or three hours to drive you back in the office because you decide to go? I feel... Um, this is a misunderstanding, really. If you decide to go, then just go. It's not their, it's not their business to drive you back to the office, really. They will drive you if the if they decide to be nice, but in the actual sense of it, they don't have to drive you anywhere. You are leaving. You are abandoning the contract, so it's you to find your way. They don't have to drive you anywhere. And that's how it should be. If they decide to drive you, that's fine anyway. But don't think, oh, I asked him to drive me to the office and he refused. He didn't refuse. He's just being honest. If you want to go to the office, you really have to find your way. Another thing. Thing I also had being mentioned a lot was like um, I went to the office and the office forced me to come back so I did remember the time you are running away from your boss people around will know their neighbors will know so you have shown you have let out their dirty linen. Their neighbors will know that they don't treat other human being right. And um, you expect them to just accept it. Even a good boss will turn out to be mean. 
maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but they are waiting for their chance and the opportunity to punish you. If you run away from your boss, run and keep running. Don't go back. There's nothing you are going to do back there. And if you think, um, oh, I ran away, I came back, th things got better. How about they just decide to show you that you ran away, but you couldn't find a better place. So you are just back here. They might decide to do something for you, but they just let you see how desperate you are and how stupid you ran away from there and come back in the same place. I wouldn't do it. If you run, run and keep running. Don't look back. Stay safe. Don't look back. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I think I'm done with this video, guys. Please subscribe, comment, and uh, and share. I really hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.